and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another honing your airbrush skills vlog. Something we haven't done for a while, but yeah, a very popular series. Just have not had a time to patch a video together. So we'll have a look at a few projects, pull apart and have a quick clean of the Ophir airbrush and be very playful with some uh, techniques and experimental methods as well as a quick maintenance of the rig and exchange and changeover of some parts. Still using the Aolan Pixie, works like an absolute champ though it is losing pressure due to my uh, bullet filter finally getting a crack and dying. It's leaking enough sufficient air that it's pumping less than 11 psi making some of my finishes a bit splattery yet I don't want to be without a filter. So I've uh, pulled another one out. We'll uh, do the swap over and see if there's a bit of an improvement in paint flow and prime a 70 second tank. Works beautifully, no leaks. Now this FX Panther is being sprayed with a bit of weathering methods on top. Guy note flat clear. Guy Note is now available in Australia through the wholesaler Hobby Co and most hobby shops around Australia so this is very easy to acquire. At first I didn't like it, it wasn't dead dead flat but the satin sheen on it, I don't mind it for certain applications especially when you still want to do further weathering and put a absolute flat down, it is cheaper in the larger 50mm. I'll still choose to finish it off with uh, rough or smooth finish Mr. Hobby. We have did a little bit of pencil weathering, uh, some washes, and you can see that it's still got a bit of a sheen. That sheen will frost up a bit, but will still be somewhat reflective. To prove that this isn't leaking anymore, we're able to push this in the higher PSI range and it cuts out. What I'm going to do is put a second hose and a three piece utilizing an actual tank on this compressor just a soft drink bottle something underneath my desk which I can disconnect and drain of water if anything happens I just buy another bottle a tutorial will be made I'll be purchasing the parts at some stage and we can do further tinkering you can see what I mean by it. it's just a slight satin look it's almost a certain um, surface reflection you'd get on a bit of machinery, plant, earth mover if it wasn't too dirtied. We're going to airbrush this Star Wars helmet stand out of waste resin. We'll spray it with Tamiya Primer, my favourite product. The airbrush is the Ophir 0.5mm with a very thick nozzle. With a micro filling primer, it still sprays like an absolute champ. I was talking about the Tamir uh, recently on social media. It has a very nice texture luster. It dries very, very quickly, and it's probably got the uh, strongest next to automotive grade uh, primer adhesion. It makes uh, buffing, sanding, polishing, masking an absolute breeze on uh, multiple surfaces, including metal. It is uh, also etched without uh, any issue. It just doesn't like resin for some reason. And once you mix a small amount, jet bubble, it just sprays the dusts on without any cloggage and it'll go for days. And because we've just put in the new filter, I'm suddenly able to do really, really fine work now. And also colour in. Now because I don't have a tank, I normally have to spray a little bit. I wait for about 5 to 10 seconds and I can spray a bit more. And I'll take my time, I look for areas to be strategic and this is how you go if you've got one of these uh, small 12 volt uh, compressors that are under $100 or no tank. I'd like to do some bigger projects in uh, 2020 so this is why I'm going to be installing an inexpensive tank and show people with auto stops or no auto stops how to achieve it. Uh, we're going for more wet coats. Now this is the bottom. It was uh, scraped off a of support so it's pretty rough but it's going to be on the floor so you, you're not going to see it too much. Though the sides is ever so rough due to a uh, higher grit sandpaper uh, 
shredding it up but with a few coats that's all filled and running about 1000-2000 grit sandpaper over it and that is practically perfect. We're going to spray the bottom and if you notice when it starts picking up colour it actually depicts uh, the Imperial Rondel of uh, the Star Wars Imperial Faction. I always uh, recycle my lacquers and put it in. Uh, it does make mixing harder for those who don't have it down to a fine art. Maybe have two containers, one where you put your waste away, one for your uh, straight fresh batch so you know your uh, consistencies. Me, I can just swell it in a cup and I've got a good idea but realistically uh, the two container system I should also be following. When this runs out I'll buy a new one and just mix half and half and just have a pre-mixed quantity. Even though honing your airbrush skills was a very popular series and videos that I'd make, I've actually realized I had a lot of fun making it and that probably is why it's uh, so uh, popular. You guys can probably pick up on that. So what I like to do next is just wipe out the internals of the cup, uh, clean up any spill I've done outside. Uh, it's, it's not a very good uh, sight on uh, my end, it's always harder to do stuff on uh, camera. And once everything is nice and clean, we'll flush it a few times with uh, thinner. Just fill the bowl up a little bit. Jet bubble. Spray a bit to clean the needle out. And I actually pulled the needle out a little more so the opening is massive. And you just spray all of that thinner out in just a few seconds. Of course, as soon as you're done, you must, must, must push the needle back and tighten the needle nut. Or otherwise, the next time you put paint or thinner in it, it's going to run down out of your uh, nozzle. And God forbid if you tip it backwards, it will run through the internals and completely ruin it. You must be very disciplined if you are uh, going to rock the uh, needle. Do another run. We can see inside it's just slightly cloudy. I don't fill the cup all the way. And spray it out. Pull. Empty. And keep repeating until completely clean and again you can do this with a point three a point two the advantage you're doing with the point three and point two it can actually pass thicker debris that uh, the point five can normally do and you won't have as much of a build up behind the nozzle as well as uh, the amount of liquid just pouring through the nozzle is going to get any dry drip and uh, flood that out but we're also going to uh, have an inspection of that. Look up. There is a bit of a, a dry drip. It's just all wet now. Pull the needle back. Rub it out. And she's nice and clean. One last tiny squirt of thinner. Just to get any remnants out. And we're good for a color change. This is a 3D printed Stormtrooper helmet skull underneath, uh, a dead trooper. First note to notice is pre-shading it. And it looks like crap, though pre-shade can look pretty bad as long as the uh, top layers of paint and post-shading is done very nicely. You can see how it's super spluttery due to such a large nozzle and super low PSI below the threshold of uh, 9 that's just when you really struggle to atomize that was what I had to compete with with the uh, faulty filter and it's just so obvious now what a new one in that air leak does though with a bit of control you're doing a nicest job like so chuck some primer on these guys. Before we paint the other tank, I'm liking painting them in two parts, turret separate to hull, and putting two holes I can actually clip an alligator clip and suspend it. This is something I'll probably be doing with uh, the rest of the uh, turreted tanks from now on. 
All right, so we've got a fair amount of control. I'm able to... I'm able to get a small pin line and just open it slightly and fill in the blanks between the black. So you can see that. And what I'm trying to do is not completely color in the black areas, but the gray areas that overlap with the black lines, we're just slightly coloring in. And we're still letting enough of the black to come through as we get a tighter and tighter control as lighter and lighter the colors get and build it up in different areas to have the illusion of uh, light and shadowing. And it'll shade the underneath area as well. Because there's not a good way of holding it, I'm only going to paint a few panels, let it dry, pick it up again. Also, I'm not going to overspray or affect the skull underneath. Areas like the vents, the eyes, I can hand paint and further weather later. And the edges uh, where it's burnt out, I might tickle again with black and brown. The Imperial hat stand is completely done, as well as our Challenger is primed. I did a very light amount of uh, weathering on the Panther, but because there is some wet solvent uh, drying, I'm not going to do the final top coat for a few hours, as when you add matte on other thinners on top, it has a bad habit of frosting. Weathering pencils do do a treat. Start with metallic black and we'll shadow it. So we've only painted half as not to get any fingerprints. I haven't put any mounting points. It's a obsolete old method, but it is what it is. There's a few cuts and bruises and whatnot. I might just weather it up and be playful instead of actually sanding and cleaning it to perfection. It is just a quick 3D print paint project. And again, the same with this. I probably should have thought it a little better, but there is no mounting point in colouring it in. You have to do it in a few parts, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. It is leaning on the face where there's black edges and masking, just so the grey can dry nicely. And that's the look of it so far. Got the Mr. Colour Desert set, four colours. I'm going to use the more lighter ones for the Challenger. Colour modulation is not hard, it's more about the selection of the colours rather than the actual shading methods. Good selection of colours will get the best results. This is the darkest colour so far and all I'm doing is anything that's underneath and the sides and then the tops and the upper sides are going to get the lighter colours. So we're not going to spray too much just anything that's downwards casting a shadow and we'll be spraying upwards to capture it in there and then we'll reposition it here and put the lighter colors on top and it will give the illusion of casting a shadow as per what the box is displaying do the same thing for the tank itself and the whole bottom bit will be all colored in and you can see how it's all the sides the tops untouched and the bottom we're just gonna finish up as so it'll also has a work on my spider tank and each leg I'm gonna do multiple different tones of sand for different weathering we've got a little uh, salt action going on as well as uh, hairspray for a chipping technique uh, we're just going to gently shade on the first coat to encapsulate the salt. Some of it's going to fly off, that's alright. But I want to be careful not to get on the metallic bits. So it's just ever so slightly colour in or outline the edges, colour in the centre, and we'll do a bit of shading. There we go, absolutely flawless it's still a bit more shady now for the next layer we've got the sides going but now we're going to do the top but at an angle to shade downwards and color in anything on the surface and when we look straight on we can see it's going dark to light there is lots of nooks and crannies on these uh, modern tanks 
So you have to be careful not to miss anything and just leave primer. The final very top coat, we could be a little more lax and shading like, but this one, this intermediate coat, we want to cover absolutely everything, but still not going at the wrong angle to take out any of the darker sand colours. Make sure we get that barrel. We look at the side of the barrel, we can see it's slowly building up in colour. And realistically, for a five ten dollar model, detail is not bad at all. And it doesn't look like much because we still need to pick up the top of the detail on the top, and that'll be a tighter paint job. Now you can see where I sprayed, I filmed it and it didn't record, that we only painted, this is a flat surface, we don't have much to go on. I'm going to have to touch up the silver there, but that's alright. We only painted half the panel, so the bottom half is the darker yellow, the top half is the lighter, and then we just highlight the edges with the absolute lightest. And once this is all done, we're going to uh, chip all the salt off. Probably want to just add a little bit of liquid black up that lip there. You can see with just the testing on the sprayer, we've got three different colours. And back to our turret, we're going to face only up and not touch the sides whatsoever. And just highlight some strategic areas where it's sloping, I don't want to spray. And I'm just going to colour in within major panels. And give it a bit more light, a bit more love. And there we go, that's all it requires, it's just a little tickle and you've got three tones wherever which angle you're looking at and it just gives it that much more definition. A little bit of pigment, a little bit of weathering, a little bit of uh, dry brushing of the edges and you've got practically almost something to put on a table for a competition or a proud item for social media and it really was not that hard at all it's all selection of colors the box does come with the basics but you could just go to the hobby shop and buy three or four colors that are really close uh, be play playful five six just take a photo of this uh, box and take it in and uh, yeah choose straight off the rack in whatever medium you use back on our flat surface we're only tickling the top that much that much. That's it. And it just gives us a whole different range to look at. Maybe a little there, and that's it. It's just a little bit of here and there. Less is always more. It's like the glint in the gloss surface, or the glint in the eye. Too easy. Now, with something like this, we're going to hit the high bit, but we're also going to hit the low bit. And the more it goes to the center, the darker, because we've just got that massive ridge there. Next, we're going to be spraying Mr. Color GX Liquid Black. It's synthetic, really, really thick. You get like 20 mil for almost the price of 10 mil. You super thin it, and it just comes with tons and tons of paint. It'll last you quite a while. You use it as a weathering agent, as well as... A shading agent. You can all afford to over thin it because the idea is not to completely color in or to do a candy coat. Candy coat being a silver and then you apply a few colors of clear to get a metallic look. We just want to, when we spray a line, it just builds up a bit. When you spray for too long at tiger's eyes, that's actually absolutely perfect. So we're back to this leg and we can see this lip here. It's just not quite dark enough to cast a shadow. And instead of using straight black, we're just going to put a couple of passes on it. It's one pass, it's two passes, it's three passes. It target eyed ever so slightly, but we could just color it a bit more. And there you go, that's good enough. And you've got a shadow cast that completes this part. On the turret, we're going on a 40 degree angle. Just put a couple of coats. Focus a bit where there's the odd vent. We've got the cannon. That definitely casts a shadow. And at the tip of the nozzle, I just put a little bit of a build up. It's not really noticeable on the real thing, but it just brings a bit of eye attention to the tip of the gun. And it's almost like there's a, a bit of a muzzle flash or anything. 
It's not super accurate, but it's something you would see on a much larger scale. And we're just a bit playful. We see any vents, we're just going to hit it up, spray it a bit, a little bit in some of these cabins, and it just adds that much more definition. For the hull, we can go far more crazy. I love to spray the wheel wet wells a few times. Build that up, as well as just underneath the whole assembly. And we'll do that a few times. It almost uh, washes up. It just collects in uh, little surface details and whatnot. Now we've got a tar we've got the uh, cannon going across there. So we'll just do a quick spray. And where the turret's going around, we're just going to have a bit of a halo effect where a shadow is roughly being cast. It's not putting a black black but it's sort of just darkening it a bit for that little extra realism. And we've got these uh, vents all over the place and even though we're going to put a sludge wash in these vents we're just going to darken them up like soot, fuel, carbon build up, all that sort of thing. And it just changes the colour and it gives us more of a definition of a functioning, working plant material or a piece of uh, worn used equipment in the battlefield rather than just a, a plastic toy. So we're going to darken a little closer to the turret area like that. And it looks ridiculous now but once the turret goes on it's going to make so much more sense. A little more at the inside of the turret realm. Spray there, spray there, spray there, spray there. In case anyone looks under, it's just darker. And that's it. That's all you really need to do underneath these uh, fuel cans. Really darken it up. And it's just in case anyone looks there or a camera flashes down. It's just that little extra bit of definition. Maybe you want to only use two colours. Get more than two colours. Stick to two, three. And just in case you want to go darker or lighter somewhere, that's when you pull it out and you have full advantages. It's another reason why you should never shade with black and white. Because if you ever want to go lighter or darker in a certain bit of detail, you've always got something to go a little higher. Instead of white, I always go for things like light grey or flesh or something. Look at that. I did one more pass under there to make it darker and shed it further down due to the tiger eye. It came out okay. Tickled the very, very bottom with uh, liquid smoke as well to just give it a slight more variation. About... Five to ten minutes have passed from the first layer. We don't want to let this completely dry dry, but uh, harden a bit. There's a difference between dry to the touch and a chemical harden. Once it's chemically hardened, it's all over, but dry to the touch is uh, good enough. The underneath layer is hairspray. Under that is uh, silver paint that has been curing longer than a week. It's actually been a few months, but you want a full cure job. And as we scratch the uh, edges are starting to get paint chips and this is the easiest to do when it's in that intermediate period between drying and chemically hardened and you can do scratches you can do all sorts of interesting things where there's rivets where there's uh, panel lines and just lightly do it ever so lightly do it uh, you're more you put more pressure with the back of the blade, lighter pressure with the actual um, blade blade of the blade, if uh, that makes any sense. And don't be afraid to touch areas. The salt will uh, wear out with uh, passing with the blade, and it will also wear out when uh, you touch it. Uh, soak in water, and that will activate the last of the salt. Let it completely harden, put a clear coat on, and that hairspray is stuck. The effect you've got is the effect you've got. And the trick with salting is put a bunch of salt on with the hairspray and then remove until you like the look of it. Uh, subtle, less is more. I might have weathered this whole thing a little too much, so the legs I want to go more classic. 
and it's it's turning out quite nice now and be a bit random yet strategic of where weather is likely to appear and don't, feel, don't, don't feel bad if you've got like the wrong scratch here and there a few scratches actually looks pretty sick and have fun be playful do this to a, a few cheap models just to get an uh, ideal of it a look look lots of uh, reference material and you'll know what you're heading into I'll show you when it's done so as we move we can see the metallic sheen from underneath and it's not too overly done there's a mixture of scratches there's a mixture of uh, edges uh, being worn there's a mixture of uh, paint chips and I'm pretty happy there's a few tones of silver underneath so that gives it definition and uh, the shading of it uh, also definitely adds to that here's the rest of the parts of the kit and some of the areas are overly weathered some of its other it's almost like some parts are new some parts are old it's a giant it's meant to be a 70 second tank which is ridiculously enormous for and we've got an example of uh, the cleaner legs there'll still be some sludge washing and extra effect added uh, to darken it up and add it to uh, what the hull and the rest of it looks like and there's some covers that are just naturally uh, rusted away according to the box art so you can see that the finish I'm trying to go for is very similar to uh, the box art I just don't want the camouflage also on the legs it is an enormous amount of work I might camouflage one or two of the legs so we'll see how we go unfortunately I have to shade every layer of uh, spraying I've done on this thing including this complex dot effect though I don't think all the legs have camouflage so that actually comes to my advantage at the cap this bit is different colored to some of them so I'm gonna have to remember that for a modular effect I'm not gonna batch paint all the legs because I want it to be different shades so each of them will be a combination of two to three different uh, sand colors from uh, different selections of uh, paints and colors as to not to match and give it variety when it's all coming together this thing is just really difficult to plan but I think it's going to be effective for the sheer scale you can see my collection of 70 second tanks in the background you can just imagine how big it's going to be it is a bit ridiculous I also forgot to mention I did wash this with water and I want to hit it guy clear flat however because there's water due to how much of the armor and uh, under areas there is water is going to be trapped and if you spray anything solvent on water the water is going to pull around and just ruin the uh, paint and make it uh, ripple and whatnot so allow it to air dry at least for about 12 to 24 hours before doing any more spraying and it also allows it to fully chemically harden put the uh, clear paint on top it all activates it resettles it chemically hardens that hairspray is completely useless it's not going to chip anymore just a reminder of compressors I'm going to turn it off I actually forgot it's got a regulator and we're going to disconnect it to allow it to dry and any moisture caught in the hose or the system is going to release and uh, not corrode the piston going back to the challenger now we can actually have appreciate that even though the lighting my studio is not good it doesn't matter how you tilt it the definition looks the same that's the coloring not the actual shading in the room you can also see the halo that goes uh, around we've got the vents back here once we put our turret on that halo actually makes a lot more sense now and it actually looks quite suitable altogether, especially with all that dirt and grime and whatnot coming back from the uh, vents. We'll give it a bit more of a sludge wash and a bit of chipping. And that would uh, call this project uh, an end. I don't want to go too hard or far on it. It's just a, a cheap Chinese plastic recycled project. We've put a final flat or flat mat coat on. And this is when all the washes and detail, whatnot, starts to really pop. Put a second tone of brown wash and a little bit of brown weathering pencil. And that is the detail we're looking for. Silver chipping. That is a finished kit once it's dried and hardened.
We'll get a little bit more work done on the helmet. I'll whiten it up a bit in the session and with the stands as it sits like that. So far metallic black which looks pretty cool but I want to have a gradient going down of uh, gunmetal and around the edges and on the top I'll shade a bit of silver to make the Imperial logo pop and give it a sludge wash heavily build up some clear gloss. The top of it will just go black in case it's visible through the eye hole of the skull. Always do test spray. It's looking pretty good. And we'll start doing the edges of the rondel. Just brushing that on and it's uh, building up that intensity and we'll just shade it around. Now we're going to face the rondel upwards and just gently colour the top as so. And there we go, we've got a, a two-tone of downwards it's brighter, upwards it's darker we shade the top a bit further because there's not enough distinction. Some transparent smoke. And we're going to just pull back and just shade upwards. And that's it. And as it's getting darker, we start pulling it in and getting darker at the top. And it's just very playful, it's easy going. Just a bit of a tickle at the very bottom. And that's, that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. We'll begin the next colour up. This one has a touch of green mixed into it. And we're just gonna, again, be a bit playful. Allow quite a bit of the darker grey to come through. Yet, yeah being still quite dominant with uh, this grey. Want it quite a bit of it coloured in on the top. Go a bit more intense, that's the idea. And we're painting downwards. Like so, so it's starting to seriously build up quite a bit. Give a few seconds for the um, air pressure to build up. Pull back a bit and just have a couple of uh, light uh, dusts and then go in and colour in quite intensely on some bits. I think that bit I'm going to leave mostly dark grey from now on. Oops, starting to go a bit lopsided pick it up by the masking bit and there we go I think uh, that's about enough that's enough of a glow that I'm after we're gonna put a clear coat on this after it's dried as the clear black is enamel based and we don't want any crackling or faults with the gloss finish painted a mixture of acrylic and lacquer details on the Challenger and to seal it all together with something consistent we'll put uh, the guy note flat and then follow that up with weathering. Sludge washed these two. We'll give them a day or more to dry before clearing. Well, I'm really happy with the green. So we're only going to dust on the top and some highlighty areas. Lots and lots of shading. I've got some light grey being weathered. I don't want to spray any white white. Uh, we're just really pulling back and just giving it a bit of a tickle. And it's going to be a slow build up, no major colouring, except for the very top. I've slightly over thinned it, so it should be fairly transparentish. Uh, it does mean for the edges where it's black and stuff, I'm going to have to re really go over that. I'll do a, more of a solid spray on the very roof of it like that. And that's it, that's all I want to do bit of a tickle on the side, a little bit of highlight across the bridge of the nose, 
and then the cheeks area and it's just little highlights like that a bit on the chin and that's all we want we just want to suggest a suggestion of uh, white or it used to be white now I'm going to spray the tiniest amount of flesh in some odd places in a fairly uneven manner to give the hint of unevenness that it's uh, rotting in some places now I've got some overly thinned brown so I can paint some really really thin lines I'm going to be doing and since this is so dry to the touch outline some areas and pretty much have some of those burnt tinges again that the black originally symbolized with where the skull used to be and just highlight the little edges it's going to take a little while to go all the way around it's starting to look pretty good I'm pretty happy, it's all about the angles and getting a really really tight line, taking a break, letting the air build up and just going down the cracks, just taking your time being very playful, and this is a 0.5mm airbrush a very cheap Chinese piece and you're getting some pretty pretty fine work out of it and a lot of people say that it's just garbage, but that's not true all about the setup one of the best colors around Alclad hot metal sepai awesome on top of just absolutely everything before we apply that let's have a look you can just see the glow around the cracks the mouth and just some bits and pieces you can be super super playful and we can go further with the weathering pencil and do weathering lines some washes go absolutely all out now this is like a bit of a wash so we're just giving a little bit of a brown touch to some areas and giving a bit of color a bit of layer and expanding the burn marks from the edges where the helmet started to wear out and burn off and we're just going to color some complete panels in to give it that hint. Back here I'm going to pull it back and just colour a major area and just have the illusion that, that it was burnt off or it was melted off whatever and this is just extending the shading of uh, where the brown uh, painting we've been doing have a bit of a pocket here pocket here around the bullet hole more and that's about it more is less around this hole as well go down a bit and that's done that's all I want to do she's finished that's probably the edge of the airbrushing I just want to hand paint a bit of uh, the eye a tiny bit of uh, black in the edges and she is ready for some clear coating and wet washes a little bit of streaking with oils, a little bit of hand painting of uh, detail and ridges, uh, top coat next, like the other two pieces, more than a day drying. Honestly, I could be airbrushing and demonstrating different parts and techniques and methods and layers on every individual kit and piece all day, but we're going to wrap it up and call a video finish. A bit of a disclaimer, which I probably should have added at the start of the video, but getting back into the swing of this uh, series. I'm not that much of an expert. I'm only sharing what I'm learning as I'm going and improving upon what I've learned from the previous uh, video going all the way back to the start. Funnily enough, when I started the McConaughey YouTube channel 10 years ago, we did reach our 10-year anniversary. 
I was very uncomfortable with airbrushing and slowly learning through whatever resource and media I can get. At the time, to get a setup was a very expensive and there just wasn't a lot of information out there. I bought any book, magazine, watched any uh, YouTube channel, which there was uh, not as uh, many out there as there are today, holding your hand and taking you step by step. There was an immediate amount of information over the raw basics and the advanced stuff. Nothing really in the middle or showing the more um, exclusive or individual techniques. Now there's something for every subject, method, paint style and whatnot. It's a great age to be on YouTube and still there's plenty of space to make more content and share more things. So by all means don't restrict your research to my channel or one other source watch and consume as much as you can but most importantly of them all put it to practice whip out the airbrush and even just color in a basic toy or do some lines and we're going to wrap up uh, this video with uh, painting some lines with the newly cleaned up Ophir and the filter changed out that's the best way you're going to get confident and you're going to improve. We'll have a quick swing around. So this is the GK kit that was sprayed with Tamiya Primer. And we've uh, sanded away some imperfections. We've got a finished uh, panther that has been shaded with a few different modular sand colours. Finally, the Stormtrooper helmet is finished. There's a bit of masking, lots of layers of weathering very happy how that came out it just needs a couple of final layers of matte maybe a touch of pigment the leg from the spider tank which is very subtle with some paint chipping once you look closer and the basic uh, 4d challenger which has had a few layers of uh, weathering and top coats put on and you can see that there has not been any uh, frosting with the enamel and going up to the top turret. The air is full in the compressor. We've got paint in there. It's jet bubbling properly without splattering too much. And there you go. It starts to fade out as we lose pressure, but that's from max to least. Not too bad. Let's try a fine line. And it starts to fade out. This is mostly due to the lack of air capacity. I don't know if I've done this with the new compressor, but also that I'm um, revoltingly out of practice. Uh, we've got a bit more practicing to do. You can see my setup is definitely lacking without a tank. I've just thinned the paint a bit further. And there we go, we've got the magic. Paint was too thick, funnily enough, and I didn't recognize that quick enough, did I? That's a few thin lines, uh, slightly out of practice. Definitely need a bit of a clean. Uh, did not come out that well at all. Bit crooked, of course. And it's only doing this sort of stuff that you get better. It's just getting to know your airbrush, getting to know your airflow, the right pressures, the right paint makeup, all that sort of thing. And to prove that we can still color in, we've got our very dirty um, pan, oh sorry, cleaning pot. We've got some black and whatnot. And when you normally try to spray it immediately like that, you get this really bad pulling and whatnot, but you just take your time and you build up slowly. So it is slightly overly thin, 
and you've got a nice build up so it's pretty possible you can see there's no splattering and we just need to find the right distance which I find about five to ten centimeters away and it's just going slow going soft low pierce eye extra thin And I can see that with every line I'm doing and I'm letting it build up, I do seriously need to add a tank to this thing. It's getting smoother and smoother. There's uh, less splattering. And we're getting nice feathered edges. We're cutting out when we feel that it just doesn't quite feel right because the air pressure is bottoming out. It's the same restrictions that you have with those small 12 volt compressors. Instead of trying to achieve an impossible small line, you do smaller bursts of smaller lines. And you can just pick up where you left off and if you want to continue a line, you just pick up again. And it's possible to continue and uh, do stuff like that. And instead of trying to go into one straight line, you do it very, very soft. Multiple times. You can get an ideal line by drawing it all together. Not ideal, not ideal at all. But again, it is the whole practice thing. Uh, it is a little easier to spray on pure uh, plastic and just go super light instead of doing these hard edge straight lines. But I think once we start picking this up as a monthly occurrence, I'll be uh, straight back to uh, my old form. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, I think I'll flip this uh, piece of paper and practice a ton of other uh, lines before I log out. And catch you guys next time. Keep practicing. This is the sort of play for we're going for. About 10 minutes. Uh, some interesting things, and then I went a bit silly with splattering. Check out the description section down below for social media links and all that jazz. Catch you later.